In this video, we're going to get started on the next part of the project, which is going to be actually building blog posts. So this is going to be a blogging application where users can post to the website in the form of a blog post. So any registered user can do that. So the first step is actually building the model to model that blog object. So we're going to need to come into our console and I've got my virtual environment running and I'm going to create a brand new app for this, this particular model, this blogging model. So I'm gonna write uh, python manage.py start app, just like we've done before. And this app is gonna be called blog. So now if I look over here in sublime text, we should see it generated, there it is right there. And just like we've done before, every time you create a brand new app in this Django project, we need to add it to the settings file. So I'm going into settings.py, I'm going to copy this line and call this blog. Every single app needs to be added to the settings.py file. So now that that's added, I need to do a few other things. And the first of which is I need to download or I need to install a new library into the project because when you, uh, our blog posts are gonna need images. There's gonna need to be like a thumbnail image or some kind of a blog post image. No matter where you go on the internet, I'll bring up like a demo window to konywithmitch.com. No matter what kind of blog, oh, this window is way too big. No matter what blog you go to, konywithmitch.com, for example, if you go to blog and you click on one of these, all of them have an image, at least one image. So we need to add an image field to our blog model. And in order to add an image field, we need a special third party library to help us do that. And that third party library is called Pillow. So I'm gonna go pip install Pillow and wait for uh, Python to install that. Looks like the requirement is already satisfied because I've built this project ahead of time. So I already have that installed. And uh, as always, whenever we install a new library into our project, we have to do pip freeze requirements.txt so that that gets added to our requirements file. So if I was to open up the project directory and go into requirements, there are all of the, uh, the libraries that are installed for this project. Remember that's very important because when you go to deploy to production, you need a list of all the libraries to install in the server. So keeping a list, an active list is easiest using uh, pip freeze. All right, so now let's actually build this new model. So let's go into blog, go into models, and this is where we're gonna create our new blog post model. I need a bunch of libraries, so I guess I'll just write all the imports first of all. So I need Django db.models.signals import presave. And I'm gonna be using all these, so just kind of bear with me while I type these out. And then as I use them as I'm building this class, we will I'll uh, I'll talk about them. So I'm actually probably gonna fast forward the video here while I while I import all these. All right, there's all the libraries that we're gonna need for this class. First, the first thing I'm gonna build is I'm going to build a method or a function, a Python function for defining the upload location for the images that'll be associated with the blog post. So I'm creating a, a function named upload location. It takes an instance and a file name as input. And I wanna define a variable inside here named file path. And that's gonna be equal to blog because this is gonna belong to the blogging app. It'll take a parameter of the author ID, so the ID of the person who created that, that uh, blog post. Then I'm going to concatenate the title of the blog post with the file name. So the file name being the name that the, of the file when the user uploads it. And then I wanna write dot .format, and I wanna insert those strings. So the first one is author ID. I wanna set that to string instance dot author dot ID. All that's gonna do is it's, it's taking the ID of the user who's uploading it and getting their ID and converting it to a string, sorry. The title is again going to be string. This is instance, instance dot title. So that's just the title of the blog post. And file name is the name of the file uh, that, that comes from their computer when they upload it. And then of course, I just want to return that file path. So that's gonna be the, the name or the wherever this image is stored, the name of the image that's being stored on. In this case, it's gonna be locally on the machine, but if this was a production environment, then that would be the name of the file stored on the, um, the content delivery network. But we're, talk, we're gonna talk more about that later. Don't worry, you're gonna be very confused by that statement, so just, just bear with me and, and kinda stay with me. Okay, so this class is going to be named blog post and we want to go models.model like we've done before. It's going to have a title field. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five equals models.character field. 
this is going to be max length equals 50 characters. I want to set null to false and also blank equal to false because it can't have a, uh, a null title and it can't have a blank title. So in other words, the title is a required field. Uh, now I'm going to copy that line and the next one is going to be the body. This is going to be the body of the blog post. It's going to have a text field as input. The characters, um, I think actually later in the course, I wanted, I did some testing and I think I set it to 5,000 as the max length. I think that's a pretty good length for like a longer size blog post. So 5,000 5, should cover the needs. Uh, and last or not lastly, the next field is an image field. So models.image field. You can't use this unless you use uh, Pillow, the library that I installed earlier in this video. So keep that in mind. And the parameter that we want to set first is the upload location. So we want to set the upload location equal to the upload location function that I just built right here. So if I was to change this to a one, I would change that to a one just to be clear. Although I'm sure you uh, you kind of put that together. I need a little bit more room here. So I'm gonna copy that line. The next one is going to be the date published. And this is going to be a date time field. Date time field, just like we did with our user model. And let's see which parameters we need. We need, for this one, we need the auto now auto now add parameter set that to true that's going to insert a timestamp as soon as the object is created i want to set a verbose name equal to date updated and the next field is going to be the or sorry date published got ahead of myself there because the next field is going to be date updated date updated and then i want to change this actually i'll leave that and I want to change this to auto now. So the only time that this timestamp will change is when the object changes itself, or in other words, when it's updated. The next field is going to be an author field. And this one we want to, oh, I can't get that to line up properly. Oh, it's because they all have an extra space here. Let's just get rid of that. So this one, this one is going to be, this is going to line up with, our users tables. We, we want to basically use a foreign key relationship. For those of you who are familiar with SQL, we want to use a foreign key relationship to tie this author field to the users table or to the account table. So we need a foreign key relationship here. So I'm going to use foreign key and I want to associate this with whatever user actually um, creates this. So I want to do auth user model and I want to set a parameter to that call, that's called on delete and set that to models.cascade. So let me let me just talk about this. So first of all, what what is this? I'm sure that's confusing you. Well, remember if we go into our settings file, we have that auth user model parameter. Where is it? Auth user model parameter set right here that's set to our account model. So that's all that I'm doing here. It's instead of importing our account model, I'm saying look for whatever account or user or authenticated kind of model I have associated with this project for the users and use that. So it knows to look for into our account table and um, use a foreign key relationship to that table. So the user that creates this will be associated with their account. Uh, next is the on delete. So this is we define what happens if this blog post is deleted. So cas models.cascade means delete anything that you see that's associated with this blog post. That would mean, you know, images or whatever else is associated with it. Um, don't delete the author, don't delete the, yeah, the account that's associated with it, but delete all the other objects that are associated with it. So models.cascade, that's what it does. Uh, not, now the last field is going to be the slug. And for most of you, you probably have no idea what a slug is, but it's a it's a web development thing. A slug is essentially a URL. So if I was to go to codingwithmitch.com, uh, this would be the slug for this blog post. If I was to go back and go to a different blog post, that would be the slug of that blog post. So a slug is just a URL. That's all it is. So I'm going to call this, uh, this is a slug field, and I want to set this blank equal to blank equal to true and unique, unique, oh, I can't spell unique equal to true. So the slug is of course unique. There can't be any other URL that has the same one. That wouldn't make sense, right? Because if you try to visit a URL and there was two possibilities, that doesn't work. So we have to make sure that the slug field is unique. So now we want to define our string field for 
uh, returning whatever it is we want to return if they just reference the object. I want to return the title, that makes sense. And now that's that's our model. That's our basic blog posting model. Now the rest of this class is gonna be extras that we need to uh, do certain things given certain circumstances. The first one that I'm gonna define is a receiver. So I'm gonna go at receiver. I wanna do post delete. So I'm referencing a, a import that I have up here from the Django DB model signals import post delete. And I'm don't worry, I'm gonna explain this. So just hang on, I just wanna type it out first. I wanna set the sender equal to the blog post. And I want to define submission delete sender instance and keyword arguments. Uh, for the, we've, you haven't seen keyword arguments before. Uh, we don't actually, I don't even think we need to pass it so I can just delete this rather than confuse you. I'm not gonna talk about it now. We'll talk about keyword arguments later in the course when we actually have some keyword arguments. So I'm gonna do image or instance.image.delete and pass false. So what this does, what this is gonna do is if this blog post is deleted, I want to also delete the image that's associated with it. If I didn't build this, the image would still stay on my database or stay on my content delivery network or stay on my local machine, in this case, in the development environment. So of course we wanna delete that image if the blog post is deleted because it, it would just be keep uh, taking up space otherwise. Now the last thing I wanna build is something called a pre-save receiver. So define pre-save blog post receiver. This is gonna be called uh, before the blog post is actually committed to the database. That's why it's called a pre-save receiver. And you're, I'm, I, I need to reference this, this pre-save import up here. Oh, I actually could have done this pre-save instead of doing two separate lines. So, so yeah, as I was saying, this is gonna get called before the uh, blog post is saved into the database. So it's, it's like if you want to, it's, if you're familiar with retrofit on Android, for example, it's kind of similar to like the interceptors. You can intercept requests and either take action before or after the request is finished. It's the same kind of thing here. This intercepts the saving of the blog post to the database and you can execute some action before it's actually saved. So what I wanna do is I wanna create a slug before it's saved. So if not instance.slug, if there is no slug created yet, I want to go instance.slug equals slugify and which is the it's a function for creating a slug and i want to do instance dot author dot username and i want to concatenate that with the uh the title so instance dot title and that's going to make sure that this blog post is unique so i'm taking the author's username doing dash and then the the title of the blog so there should be pretty much no way that someone else creates the exact same blog post because the username is unique in the user model. So if we look in here, we know that our username field is unique so that that shouldn't be possible. And also it'll have a different title. So that's, uh, that'll be our pre-save pre receiver. And then we just need to wire up our pre-save receiver by going pre-save.connect, referencing the receiver, and then writing sender equals blog post. So whenever a blog post is attempted to be saved into the database, call this function and do this thing. That is basically how this works. So I'm pressing control S and now since we have everything built in here, it's gonna be time to uh, make the migrations. Oh, actually do the, I need to do the admin first. So let's go into uh, blog.admin. I wanna do uh, from uh, blog.models import blog post. And then we need to do the same thing that we've done many times before. I wanna do admin.site.register and I wanna register that blog post model and, and save that. So now I want to go into our console and we need to make the migrations and uh, build the model in, or build the table in the database. So python manage.py make migrations. Hopefully there's no error, looks like there is. Uh, looks like there's an invalid syntax in the receiver. So if I highlight everything here, there is a colon there. Oh, I think because I think you actually have to pass args and keyword args here. Uh, I think it requires you to do that. Let me try that again. Nope, still not good. Oh, there's no um, there's no colon, so I need to add a colon there. So saving that, going back to the console, make migrations. Uh, looks like looks like the upload location. There's a problem. Let's see. Um, did it? What did it say? Keyword arguments are required or something? Super, yeah, you need the keyword argument. So I have to pass 
And you don't know what keyword arguments yet are yet, I'm sure, but don't worry, we're gonna talk more about those later in the course. Try to make migrations again, get the same thing. Got unexpected argument upload location. Oh, whoops, this this isn't upload location, this is upload to. So I, I referenced an incorrect property. There's nothing in an image field named upload location, it's upload to. So pressing control S again, trying to make the migrations. Getting another error, looks like setting is not defined, that should be settings. Saving that again, trying again. Uh, another Another error, let's see. Signal receivers must accept keyword, must accept keyword arguments, keyword args. So that should have, that should, oh, is it this? Yep, it is this. This also needs keyword arguments. Again, you won't know what that is, so just kind of bear with me. Now I'm going to make migrations one more time, and this should work. There we go, we've created the model. Okay, great, now let's migrate, and run server, run server. All right, so uh, since I deleted the database, I have no users, so I actually do need to create a super user. Python manage.py create super user again. Mitch at tabian.ca. Mitch, my password, my password again. Password is too common, that's fine. All right, run the server. Now we're going to log into the admin. My password is just password. And there's our blog post. We could create a blog post. I'll just give it first blog post as a title. This is the first blog blog post and choose some kind of an image. Sure, flutter buttons, author is me. And we don't need to enter a slug. You can enter a slug, but it will automatically get generated because of our uh, pre-save receiver. So we don't need to worry about that. I'll click save and continue. It was created and there's our first blog post. So that's good. So now uh, before we move on, the only thing I wanna talk about is where where was the image saved? So right now we have this image field. It was created with the blog post. If we go to the blog post and I click here, uh, looks like looks like it's telling me that that blog post doesn't exist. So the reason why it's not able to pick it up is because we haven't set up our static files and where we want uh, the images to be saved. We haven't set all that stuff up for our project yet. And if I take a look, so I'll collapse all this so you can see better. If we take a look inside of our blog app, and we, we notice that there is a new folder that's been created. It's one, and then inside there is, there's that image. So the image by default gets saved inside of the app folder. So if I was to go and create another new blog post, I'll go, you know, second blog post. This is the second blog post, and get another image. Just go to, you know, whatever, some, some kind of image, doesn't matter. Save that. And if I go back to Sublime Text, now inside of one, the reason why it's one is because the user ID, which is me, it has a user ID of one, and there's that second image. So right now the images are being saved to the app, and this is obviously not ideal. Theoretically, every user could have an infinite number of blog posts, and this is not a good place to save them because that would be on your server for one thing, which is not the right way to do it, and it would also clutter your source code. In a production environment, we would use something like Amazon Web Services S3 to store those images, which we're gonna be doing at the end of the course when I put this website live on the internet. But for now, we still need a better way to temporarily store this media. And that's what we're gonna work on in the next video. That's going to involve setting up Django static files and all, everything that has to do with basically media files and static files that don't change very much and they get typically stored on your server.